Hello dear students, I am Dr. Sumant Kumar Jha and I welcome you to the second part of the online lecture from the story The Enemy beautifully penned down by Pearl S. Buck. This video is in continuation to the previous video lecture that I had delivered on the chapter The Enemy. In the previous video lecture, we had discussed about the author Pearl S. Buck, the characters including the major and the minor ones, background of the story and the summary of the chapter, The Enemy. So in this second part of the online lecture, here we are going to discuss the central theme, the textual reading and explanation along with the difficult word meanings. But before I start the lecture, let me repeat the question that I had asked in the previous video. What is necessary for mankind to rise? Humanism or nationalism? Keep pondering over the answer until I complete the third part of the video and when I'll conclude with the third part, I'll tell you the answer. So let us start with the central idea or the theme of the story, the enemy. The central idea displays various notions like decisions and duty, humanity and kindness, and racism and nationalism. Uh, so talking about the first one, decisions and duty, the enemy is actually set in Japan during the Second World War where a severely injured American prisoner of war named Tom washes up on the beach alongside uh, the secluded home of Japanese doctor named Dr. Sadao Hoki. And for the bulk of the story, Sadao struggles to reconcile his duty as a surgeon, which goes directly against the grain of his duty as a loyal Japanese citizen. Ultimately, his duty succeeds enmity and he saves the life of Tom. Getting on to the second theme. So we find that throughout the course of the enemy, Dr. Sadao Hoki struggles to come to terms with his conflicting impulses to see Tom an American prisoner of war. So Sadao, a local Japanese citizen, would perceive Tom as an enemy because America and Japan were in war with each other. But he shows an act of kindness and brings him back to life. This deed of humanity serves as the major theme of this story. Uh, considering the third theme, so the enemy follows the renowned surgeon Dr. Sadao Hoki and they struggle to decide what to do. The prisoner, who was a white teenager named Tom, uh, is badly uh, injured. So he was compelled as a doctor to save his life. He was a nationalist. But prior to that, he was a human being. So he rose above the normal standards of humanity to set an example for the generations ahead. So let us now start with the textual reading and explanation. I will also tell you the meaning of the difficult words that we come across in the text. So it is the time of the World War. An American prisoner of war is washed ashore in the dying state and is found at the doorstep of a Japanese doctor. Should he save him as a doctor or hand him over to the army as a patriot? So the story is set 
uh, during the Second World War, as we learned, uh, where a Japanese doctor finds an American prisoner of war at his doorstep. He's in a dilemma that being a doctor, should he save the wounded man? Or being a Japanese and a nationalist, he should hand over the enemy to the army. So he was in dilemma and this dilemma continues throughout the text. Throughout the story, you will find this dilemma going on. Dr. Sadahoki's house was built on a spot of the Japanese coast where as a little boy, he had often played. The low square stone house was set upon rocks well above the narrow beach that was outlined with bent pines. As a boy, Sadao had climbed the pines, supporting himself on his bare feet. He had seen men do in the South Seas when they climbed for coconuts. His father had taken him often to the islands of those seas and never had he failed to say to the little brave boy at his side, those islands yonder, they are the stepping stones to the future for Japan. Where shall we step from them? Sadao asked seriously. Who knows? His father had answered. Who can limit our future? It depends on what we make. So the writer here introduces the main character of the story, Dr. Sadao Hoki. His house was situated on the coast of Japan. He had been living there since his childhood. The house had a low height and it was made of stone. Uh, it was set upon the rocky beach which had boundary line made uh, with pine trees that were tilted towards one side. When Dr. Sadao was a child, he would climb up the pine trees. On his visits to the South Seas, uh, he would see men do so in order to get coconuts from the tree and thus he used to replicate them. He would accompany his father to the islands of the South Seas often. Uh, his father would point towards the island and would say that those were the stepping stones towards the future of Japan. And Dr. Sadao, as a young child, would question him childishly that where would they reach from those islands? His father would reply that it was not known as it depended on the future. The future had no limits. It depended on mankind how it shaped its future. Sadao had taken in this into his mind as he did everything his father said. His father, who never joked or played with him, but who spent infinite pains upon him, who was his only son. Sadao knew that his education was his father's chief concern. For this reason, he had been sent at 22 to America to learn all that, he, that could be learned of surgery and medicine. He had come back at 30 and before his father died, he had seen Sadao become famous not only as a surgeon, but as a scientist. Because he was perfecting a discovery which would render wounds entirely clean. He had not been sent abroad with the troops. Also, he knew there was some slight danger that the old general might need an operation for a condition for which he was now being treated medically. And for this possibility, Sadao was being kept in Japan. Sadao retained all the things that his father would tell him as a child. His father never played or joked with him. Uh, he was not like a friendly father, rather, but a strict father. They shared a mature relation and his father underwent a lot of hardships to bring him up. Sadao knew that his father was concerned about his education. So he was sent to America at the age of 22 to study surgery and medicine.
He returned at the age of 30. Before dying, Sadao's father saw Sadao become famous not only as a surgeon but also as a scientist. Sadao was on his way to discover a treatment for wounds which would make them absolutely clean. So he was not sent abroad with the armed forces as a doctor, although the war was on, but he was not sent uh, along with the troops because the general who was sick knew well that he would need Dr. Sadao for his operation without which the general might not survive. And therefore, in case of emergency, he would use Dr. Sadao. Clouds were rising from the ocean now. The unexpected warmth of the past few days had at night drawn heavy fog from the cold waves. Sadao watched mists hide outlines of a little island near the shore and then come creeping up the beach below the house, wreathing sound around the pines. In a few minutes, fog would be wrapped about the house too. Then he would go into the room where Hana and his wife would be waiting for him with the two children. So here the writer describes the scene outside Dr. Sadao's house. As the days were usually warm and the sea waves were cold, the nights became foggy. So Dr. Sadao saw the boundary of a nearby island become invisible gradually due to the fog and the mist. Uh, slowly the mist was coming closer to him. Soon uh, there would be mist all around his house and at that time he would go back into the house as was his usual routine uh, to his wife Hana who was waiting for him along with their two children. But at this moment the door opened and she looked out. A dark blue woolen howdy over her kimono. Hauri is a loose outer garment worn over the kimono. She came to him affectionately and put her arm through his as his stood, smiled and said nothing. He had met Hana, this is uh, the uh, flashback, uh, in America but he had waited to fall in love with her until he was sure she was Japanese. His father would never have received her unless she had been pure in her race. He wondered uh, often whom he would have married if he had not met Hana. And by what luck he had found her in the most casual way, by chance literally, at an American professor's house. The professor and his wife had been kind people anxious to do something for the new foreign students and the students, though bored, had accepted this kindness. Sadao had often told Hana how nearly he had not gone to Professor Hali's house that night. The rooms were so small, the food so bad, the professor's wife so voluble. But he had gone and there he had found Hana, a new student, and had felt he would love her if it were at all possible. So kimono uh, is a traditional Japanese garment that we call kimono. So before Sadao could go inside, the door opened and his wife looked out for him. She was wearing a dark blue colored gown, that is kimono, over her dress. She lovingly crossed her arm with his, smiled at him and remained silent. Uh, now this flashback continues that they had met in America. Sadao knew that his father would agree for this marriage only if the girl is Japanese and pure in her race. Uh, then Sadao thought that how lucky he had been 
because he uh, went to Professor Harley's residence that day and he had met Hana. Although the students did not like to go uh, to the professor's uh, residence for uh, the classes, but uh, he went that day and he met Hana. The professor's residence were, uh, was actually too compact, too small. Uh, the food was uh, not good at the professor's uh, house and uh, his wife was too talkative. But if he had not gone there that night, he would not have met Hana. At that time, Hana was a new student. Sadao had thought that he would love her if at all it would be possible for him. Now he felt her hand on his arm and was aware of the pleasure it gave him. Even though they had been married years enough to have the two children. For they had not married heedlessly in America. They had finished their work at school and had come home to Japan. And when his father had seen her, the marriage had been arranged in the old Japanese way. Although Sadao and Hana had talked everything beforehand. They were perfectly happy. She laid her cheek against his arm. Heedlessly is carelessly. So Sadao and Hana loved each other even after having two children. They uh, had not married heedlessly or in hurry. Rather, they returned to Japan, sought permission from the parents and then got married in a traditional Japanese ceremony. They had discussed all the details before the wedding and they were happy with each other. At this moment, Hana rested her cheek against Sadao's arm with affection. It was at this moment that both of them saw something black come out of the mists. It was a man. He was flung up out of the ocean, flung, it seemed, to his feet by a breaker. He staggered a few steps, his body outlined against the mist, his arms above his head. Then the curled mists hid him again. Staggered is uh, to walk un unsteadily, uh, as if about to fall. So at that moment, when they were out, they saw a figure appear out of the mist. It was all mist surrounding their house. It appeared black in color because of the mist. And they could view the body, the shape of a body, which was flung out of the ocean. The man, it seemed, walked unsteadily with the arms above his head. It also indicated to the couple that he was a prisoner of war. The man walked a few steps and then disappeared in the mist. Who is that? Hana cried. She dropped Sadao's arm and they both leaned over the railing of the veranda. Now they saw him again. The man was on his hands and knees crawling. Then they saw him fall on his face and lie there. So they saw this figure and Hana reacted by asking that who was that? She took her arm out of Sadao's arm and both of them bent forward to have a closer look at the man. They saw him again. This time he was crawling on his hands and knees. Then he fell on his face and kept on lying there. Probably he had fainted. A fisherman, perhaps, Sadao said, washed from his boat. 
He ran quickly down the steps and behind him, Hana came, her wide sleeves flying. A mile or two away on either side, there were fishing villages. But here was only the bare and lonely coast, dangerous with rocks. The surf beyond the beach was spiked with rocks. Somehow, the man had managed to come through them. He must be badly torn. So, spiked is covered with sharp points. Now, uh, they saw that the man had fallen upon his uh, face and this area was full of villagers uh, who were mostly associated with fishing. They were fishermen and they thought that he is one of them. He ran to help him and Hana, being a very favorable wife, ran after him. The loose leaves of a howry flew as she ran. This part was not much habited by the inhabitants and there were sharp and spiky rocks and the rocks were pointed. So they thought that the man or the fisherman would have been badly torn. They saw when they came toward him that indeed it was so. The sand on one side of him had already a stain of red soaking through. As the Japanese couple saw the man, they realized that he was badly injured as they had uh, already thought of. The sand on which he lay had blood stains at one side which clearly indicated that this man was wounded. He is wounded, Sadao exclaimed. He made haste to the man who lay motionless, his face in the sand. An old cap stuck to his head, soaked with sea water. He was in wet rags of garments. Sadao stopped Hana at his side and turned the man's head. They saw the face. A white man! Hana whispered. So when they were near the man, they saw that the blood stain and they were sure that this man is wounded. Sadao then uh, turned the man so that they could see who the person is. Uh, his dress was also wet and torn. And as they saw the face, Hana spoke confidentially that he was white and American. And what did that mean? It meant for them that he is their enemy, the national enemy. Now the dilemma, whether uh, they need to save the man or they need to throw him back in the water or leave him in the dying state. So this dilemma, whether or not, this conflict between mind and soul continues throughout. Yes, it was a white man. The wet cap fell, above, fell away and there was wet yellow hair, long, as though for many weeks it had not been cut. And upon his young and tortured face was a rough yellow beard he was unconscious and knew nothing that they did for him. So that American was uh, injured and little he knew that uh, what help or what favor is the couple doing to him. He was young, his face had marks which indicated that he had been tortured. He had a rough uh, yellow colored bear and as he fainted, uh, he did not know of the presence of Sadao and Hana Hoki. Now Sadao remembered the wound and with his expert fingers, he began to search for it. Blood flowed freshly at his touch. 
on the right side of his lower back Sadao saw that a gun wound had been reopened the flesh was blackened with powder sometime not many days ago the man had been shot and had not been tended it was bad chance that the rock had struck the wound so looking at the man Sadao uh, now uh, gets reminded of that this man is wounded because of the blood stain he had seen earlier and because he was a doctor he moved his trained fingers around the man's back to search for the wound and then he uh, felt the uh, wound uh, at his back uh, and he uh, definitely understood that it was a gun wound a gunshot and he also learned that the man had been injured a few days back and he was not being given any uh, medical assistance or medical help and uh, therefore uh, he is wounded and that wound was reopened due to the spiky rocks through which he came here oh how he is bleeding Hana whispered again in a solemn voice solemn is quite serious the mists screened them now completely and at this time of day no one came by the fishermen had gone home and even the chance beachcombers beachcombers are a vagrant uh, who makes or earns his livelihood by searching some valuable things around the coast so they thought that beachcombers would have considered the day at an end so uh, hana was basically concerned that the man was injured and she said that he's bleeding now the mist had intensified it had covered all around and the three of them could not be spotted by anyone moreover the fishermen and the rag pickers uh, did not visit the place at that time of the day what shall we do with this man sadao muttered but his trained hands seemed of their own will to be doing what they could stanch the fearful bleeding he packed the wound with the sea moss that strewed the beach the man moaned with pain in his stupor but he did not awaken the best thing that we could do would be to put him back in the sea sadao said answering himself now that the bleeding was stopped for the moment he stood up and dusted the sand from his hands yes undoubtedly that would be best hana said steadily but she continued to stare down at the motionless man if we sheltered a white man in a house we should be arrested and if we turned him over as a prisoner he would certainly die sadao said the kindest thing would be to put him back into the sea hana said but neither of them moved they were staring with curi curious repulsion upon the inert feet so here muttered is to speak in low voice low tone stanch is to stop or restrict from flowing sea moss is a kind of seaweed and streaweed uh, means scattered untidily over the place like the mosses were moaning is crying in pain and stupor is a state of unconsciousness repulsion is a strong dislike for something and inert is motionless so sadao answered to himself and said that the best thing would be to put this man 
back into the sea. As the bleeding stopped, he stood up and he removed the dust from his hands. Hana supported his opinion, but looked intently at the man as he lay still. Sadao thought that if they provide shelter to this man, they would be arrested for sheltering an enemy. If they handed him over to the Japanese army as a prisoner, then he would die in the prison. So the conflict of mind and soul. As he thought that both the options were not favorable. So the best option was to put him back into the sea. Hana added that the kindest act would be to put this wounded man back into the sea. Both of them did not move ahead to do so. Rather, they stared at the motionless figure with dislike. They disliked him because he was an enemy, an American prisoner of war. Let us find out what would they do next. What is he? Hana whispered. There is something about him that looks American, Sadao said. He took up the battered cap. Yes. There, almost gone, was the faint lettering, a sailor, he said, from an American warship. He spelled out, U.S. Navy. The man was a prisoner of war. So battered here is torn out, worn out. So Hana was quite inquisitive as she asked about the man's identity who is he and Sadao answered that he appears to be an American prisoner of war because at the battered hat it was mentioned the US Navy so he was a sailor from the American Army and that's what they concluded He has escaped, Hana cried softly, and that is why he is wounded. Sadao and Hana discussed that the man had tried to escape from the prison and had been shot in the back. That's what they concluded. So they hesitated, looking at each other. Then Hana said with resolution, with firmness, come. Are we able to put him back into the sea? They were not able to gather the courage to throw him into the sea. So Hana called upon Sadao with firmness. She asked him if he was ready to put him into the sea or to throw him into the sea. If I am able, are you? Sadao asked. No, Hana said. But if you can do it alone. Sadao told her that he was able to do so. He can throw him in the ocean. But what about Hana? Is she ready to throw him back in the ocean? Hana replied in negative and added that if he could not do it by himself, then she had to help him. Sadao hesitated again. The strange thing is, he said that if the man were whole, I could turn him over to the police without difficulty. I care nothing for him. He is my enemy. You need to underline this line. He is my enemy. All Americans are my enemy. And he is only a common fellow. You see how foolish his face is, but since he is wounded, Sadao was reluctant in throwing the man back into the sea. He reasoned that if the man was well, he would uh, hand him over to the police without any hesitation. 
he further said that uh, he was not concerned about the man uh, because he was just an enemy see the irony of this statement he considers him as his enemy yet he thinks of his welfare to bring him back to treat his wound he packed his uh, uh, wound with the mosses so he commented that the injured man was a common man as his face looked as if he was a foolish person but since the man is wounded he thought that he would do something for him you also cannot throw him back into the sea hana said then there is only one thing to do we must carry him into the house so further hana said that if you are unable to throw him back into the sea then the second option was to carry him home but the servants sadao inquired what about the servants he was concerned that the servants would object as they would shelter an enemy now these servants were nationalists and uh, they were not much educated hence they thought that nationalism supersedes everything supersedes humanity as well so they would not agree to this that an enemy is being brought home and their master is treating him they would rather not accept this so hana said then that we must simply tell them that we intend to give him to the police as indeed we must sadao we must think of the children and your position it would endanger all of us if we did not give this man over as a prisoner of war hana said that they would tell them that they intended to hand him over to the police once he recovered she told him that they must do that because dr sadao is a renowned surgeon and he must think about his future and they have uh, the two children as well so their future was also connected with their life and if they uh, did not hand over a prisoner of war to the police then they would be in danger sadao replied that certainly he would do so and he did not think of doing anything else Ms. both were ready to hand him over to the police